Hi everybody, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to create floors in Revit. I'm going to show two examples. That will be for the ground floor and the first floor of a house. Let's start. To create a floor, we are going to click in its icon, located at the Architecture tab. And if I click on the arrow below, you can see more than one option. And I'm going to use Floor Architectural. Now pay attention to this. Unlike the elements that I showed you previously in this tutorial, walls, doors or windows, floors open in the sketch mode. And the same situation happens with stairs, railings or other elements. The main characteristic of the sketch mode is these controls here. The tick to confirm and the cross to cancel and discard changes. It's the only way to get out of this kind of elements. It simply doesn't work with pressing enter and escape. So you should memorize this. However, I understand it's completely normal that you try to press escape or enter at the beginning because you are not used to that. But let's proceed. To draw a floor, it uses by default the boundary line. I can use a line, rectangle, arc, among other geometries, or this last one, which is currently the selected one, called Pick Walls. I'm going to choose it, and you will see that it's actually very simple. I only need to click on the walls until I reach a close boundary. Notice also on the options bar that it's marked. Extend into wall to core. This means that the full core is inside the boundary. However, if there was a finished face, it wouldn't be included. When I finish, I click on the tick to place the floor and exit the sketch mode. Now, as usual, it's time for learning some tips. Let's have a look at the floor appearance. I switch to the 3D view and here you have it, looking quite interesting. I can select the floor without big problems and you can see the properties of the floor at the left. Notice that it has a specific thickness and the elevation at top is 0 meters because it's located exactly in the same level as the ground floor. The elevation at base is negative, minus 0 0.15 as it's generated automatically under the ground level. So this is a generic floor with 15 centimeters of thickness, as you can see the tab on the top of the properties list. Of course, I could edit the characteristics of the floor going to edit type, but for now I skip this step. How to select the floor when I am at a floor plan? Trying to click directly on the walls doesn't work. But there is a way. First, you must place the pointer at the floor boundary, for example here. Now, instead of clicking, I press the button Tab to switch to the overlapped items. This is a very important tip to know in the Revit. Now it says Chain of Walls or Lines, so it's not this. I press Tab again. Aha, now it says Floor, so it's this one. I select it. Then, to edit the floor, I double-click on it to return to the sketch mode. Or I could click with the mouse on Edit Boundary. Here, I can easily modify the size of the floor by manipulating the boundary lines. Now, let's add the floor also to the first floor. It's easy. I switch to the first floor tab and everything that is shown here are the walls and elements from the floor below. And that's why they look transparent. If I open a selection area covering everything, nothing goes onto the selection. On the other hand, this can be very useful to draw elements in this floor, like the floor itself. So let's add the floor. This time I'm going to choose a line as my drafting method just clicking in all the corners until I reach back the start point. I personally prefer to use pick walls, but it's also fine with the line tool as you can see. When I finish, I click on the green tick 
to place the floor. Ah, but look at this information shown here, it's important. Would you like walls that go up to this floor level to attach its bottom? Since the floor is generated below the current level height, if I answer yes to that question, the walls on the ground floor will shrink in order to attach the bottom of the floor. Click on yes, and then, if I want to see how they look like, I can switch to the 3D view. Ah, now I realize the properties panel is not shown. I might have closed it accidentally, but it's fine. If this happens to you, you can open it back by just clicking with the right button on a blank space and then choose properties. Here you have it. Then just drag it to place on the position that you want. Now let's have a different situation. To connect the ground floor plan to the first floor, we need stairs. Of course, we are not going to jump. So, how can we trim a section of a floor to be like this? That's the space where we will insert the stairs later. So, make sure we are on the first floor, then double click to edit the boundary and make a new boundary line here. Basically, this is how it works. If you create a boundary area inside an existing one, the floor will be just the area between both boundaries. Then, click on the tick to confirm, and you can switch to the 3D tab to check this out. So, that is the result, as you can see. If I want, I can also edit the floor boundary here at the 3D view. But it's a bit hard, it's better if you do it always in the floor plan, at least for most of the cases. Now this is important, when creating the boundary for that space, make sure the floor also covers the walls, otherwise you will get the following message. Highlighted walls are attached but miss the highlighted targets, basically the appearance would be this. The floor just stops before the walls which is not exactly what we were expecting. So remember to draw the boundary how I showed previously. Ok, this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and also I encourage you to subscribe to my channel Cad in Black if you aren't a subscriber yet. Thank you and I'm sure we will meet next time.